All right, Brick Maniacs, well, here it is, the long-awaited Designer's Desk episode for the AC-130, Cody's uh, masterpiece, if you will. Um, man, where do we even start with this with this absolutely massive build, Cody? I, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Other than, it, I don't know how much it weighs, uh, maybe 20 pounds. It is, it is definitely heavy. It comes in one of the giant LCAC-style boxes because there's just no packaging made by man yeah, there's, or machine. There's two very large instruction books that co <laughs> coincide with it. <laughs> So For those of you with a love of chapter books and also one, modeling. Part two, it's quite <laughs> large. <laughs> so that contributes to a lot of the weight of the model <laughs> when you pick up the box, if you can't even pick up the box. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a massive model. It's been on my plate for quite some time. Originally, we met with uh, Minnesota's local Air Force Reserve Wing, the Flying Vikings, made a prototype or just a display model, rather. Uh, with their tail numbers and their insignia. And that toured around with us for a couple shows, um, built only just for display. It was not easy to take apart, but that was my first task was to reverse engineer it, tear it apart. I, and I started from scratch. I built a, an entirely second model. Because um, it's a lot of technic support inside the vehicle that the entire floor is one solid technic structure as well as the top of the fuselage and the wing box Wow! Uh, in the center. So it's, you can pick it up by the wings and <laughs> it'll, <laughs> it'll knock them apart. Uh, so originally it didn't have proper balance to it. Uh, the landing gears right here is where the final wheel is. So there's a lot of weight back here. Yeah. And that's something I've always battled when building tricycle landing gear inside of an aircraft is that they're always tail heavy because Lego weighs the same whether it's on the back or on the front. Kind of shows you that whether it's a fighter or a cargo plane, right. <laughs> you yeah. still face the same challenges. And our, our local air wing, um, they gave us a tour and they had to make a special little garage door at the top of the hangar so they could fit the tail inside the, <laughs> inside the hangar because it's so tall. Um, uh, building it, this portion of it was easy enough. It's uh, basic slopes, but it's just the weight of it that I had to counter um, putting it in the front. So I had a lot of those train weight bricks. Mm -hmm. I think there's 13 wow. <laughs> packed in the nose. <laughs> and yet it sits nice and level, so it works. Yeah, it works. Um, it, it's really heavy for the landing gear. So it does support itself. Uh, it probably doesn't taxi very well, <laughs> just because if you push it around, the gear is going to want to separate. You can taxi it if you just pick it up just a little bit, take some of the pressure off the wheels. It should spin just fine. Um, they are locked in place, but they also do retract. There's a retractable mechanism. There's two actuators per side, um, very similar in design to the real vehicle, where they just retract straight up into the fuselage, and then the doors close around it. So yeah, I, I had to start from complete scratch when redesigning this, because there were some things that were incomplete about the model, things you just forego to include when it's only for display, Sure. but having it be a kit. Um, I had to complete the landing gear doors, because they were only halfway done. So I started from the bottom, worked up, and then realized, well, <laughs> I don't really know where to go from here. I can't really take it apart and install the rest of the landing gear doors. <laughs> but this model has it. Um, also, it has a two-tone color scheme, light gray in the bottom, dark gray in the top, whereas my original model was all dark, all dark gray throughout the build. Uh, otherwise, it's largely the same. We did, at the last minute, decide to keep it motorized. Oh, really? Okay. Because we were going back and forth. Tough to not... find though, right? Yeah, tough to find. They're expensive. Mm -hmm. And we were just like, well, we'll just go all out. You know, there's, you get one shot and you might as well make it as playable and as fun as you can. And Good I guess decision. as heavy as you can too. <laughs> it did help to have the motors in there to keep it balanced. Uh, even though they're probably not necessary at this point, there's so much with the weighted bricks. Um, inside of the, fr at the nose of the fuselage, just to keep it balanced. But, yeah, I guess other than that, this came on the scene in 1968 as a gunship. It was just a cargo transport plane um, during the Vietnam War. And it was designed to replace the AC-47 gunship, the Spooky. Mm. Um, this is modeled after the Spooky 2. This is the AC-130U model. Uh, recently retired, I believe, um, 
2019, August 2019. Wow, very recently. So this would have seen service um, maybe from 95 up until that point. I'm not exactly sure. There are a lot of different variants. Not very many vehicles made, about 47 in all of its variants. There was the Spectre gunship that had two 20 millimeter rotary cannons up here and then it had a 40 millimeter buffers and a 105 millimeter howitzer at the very aft end of the fuselage. This model has a 25 millimeter GAU Gatling gun and retains the 40 millimeter buffers and the 105 millimeter howitzer at the aft end. There's other variants as well. There's the W, which is the Stinger, and the J model, which is, I believe, the most recent, as the Ghost Rider. And they have different armaments as well. But I guess we'll just keep it strictly based on this one. So this is a new 3D printed element that the animation team came up with. Camera guy um, helped design that. Uh, looks pretty cool. Doesn't spin. I needed different uh, connection. I needed it to be an axle connection, but internally there's some detail added to it, which is why I didn't want to have a pin there and then have this uh, to illustrate the uh, how they seal it into the airplane. Sure. It's supposed to be a fabric piece, mm -hmm. but that piece just stuck out to me as really representing that, um, closing up that hole. So it's an axle connection, so that's also the reason why I made that. Plus, in order to get it to it spin was. while you're flying it around, you'd have to hold it with one hand, which good luck for that. Yeah, <laughs> this is a very swooshable model, uh, but it takes two hands mm -hmm. and a little bit of muscle. <laughs> it's hard to hold it up for a long time. So there's a stand included. I'll get to that. But so you can have it look like it's flying. You're not going to want to pick it up and hold it for quite <laughs> a long time. Uh, so. Yeah, this thing's covered in a lot of different greebles, a lot of different sensors all around the aircraft, mostly just one-sided uh, on the left side of the aircraft. There's a printed FLIR forward-looking infrared, which is a piece we've commonly done. Uh, just So just recreating that one. There's an all-TV sensor here, um, and that does pivot, does rotate a little bit um, just for targeting things on the ground. This is a direct fire vehicle, so they fly pretty low to the ground, makes them more susceptible to getting shot down. Uh, more modern versions do have Hellfire missiles and bombs that they attach as wow. well under the hard points on the wings. But this variant usually carried two large drop tanks. Uh, keep it in the air drop tanks here. Yeah. yeah, and there's also a refueling port on here. so. It might use a C-130 to refuel itself. <laughs> Maybe not. They do use C-130s to uh, refuel jets and fighters as well. So it's a very versatile aircraft. Uh, very cool. It can take off and land in short distances, and with even rocket-assisted takeoff. Cool. Which is even cooler. They don't all do that, but there there have been variants. I believe the Blue Angels have their version of their Hercules that does have the rockets. Um, but I guess they went out uh, for a while. You couldn't buy them for a while, but I think they were able to wrangle enough where they are still doing that as, hmm. as part of their demonstrations. That would be cool to see. But for a while, they couldn't get the rockets anymore. Uh, I guess I'll go into the model. Well, let's talk about some of the moving features. Another thing I had to really redo, or at least complete, was the flaps and ailerons something I didn't have in the original model. Uh, I had extendable flaps only here. So they extend out of the wing mm -hmm. and then pitch down. And really I had to smooth. figure out a way to do it here too. So you pull it out and extend it down. And just ailerons here. Wow. So they <laughs> do that up. That was the one thing I really had to redo with the wings, otherwise it was just solid going mm -hmm. all the way through. Also getting the wings to not droop at all too, so the yeah, expensive solutions for that technique is expensive, but that's the only way you can really keep a structure for a straight line that's this wide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very difficult. Well, like you said, not a model you want to hold back on. Right. 
uh, elevators and rudder move. Engines are motorized. Yeah, and while we don't have uh, any batteries uh, in this specific model here, we will cut away here and just take a quick look at it because it really is kind of like the completion of the model to have those motors installed in there and, and get those spinning propellers. Uh, you know, as Cody said, we didn't cut any corners on this kit, so it, uh, it really is kind of that next level to be able to see those spin like that. Right, yeah. Uh, other features are ramp in the back that goes straight up. I guess I'll hold this up to the camera, guys. So they do have an aft viewport someone's job just to stick their head through this bubble uh, oh. just to watch their backs look for enemy fighters or incoming missiles ground missiles um, of course they have sensors to do all that too mm -hmm. <laughs> on this side of the aircraft as well there's another window that they cut for someone to sit there and also observe out this side of the aircraft and then here there is a uh, two by two round dome transparent brick that you can put here uh, just for someone to also stick their head up in this tiny dome and just look around the top of the aircraft. Usually I've seen it sealed, I haven't really seen it where they have that dome fixed all the time. It'd be a fun stop on the tour though. Yeah. If you're ever taking a look inside one of these things, that'd be pretty cool. Yes, yeah, we did. And they had they had that bubble up there. You could Well, they, they didn't have the bubble, but they just removed the hatch. Sure. So we got to stick our heads up and see the top of the aircraft. Oh, that's cool. See some of the going down. It's, it's pretty boring up top, except this model. Um, they have all the SATCOM and whatever else. <laughs> I'm not too well versed in what all the sensors do. Uh, Fascinating technical stuff. Yes. <laughs> Back here, there's a door where they would load some of the shells. Uh, in real life, it's on rollers. Actually, you probably can't do it with the battery box in there, but it does roll up and retract into the airplane. So going back to that, you can pull the ramp down. And the battery box is here. That would turn the motors on and off. I'll disconnect the wire. So that's how you turn the vehicle on and off. That's where I put that battery box just so it's easily accessible. Sure. It's hidden. There's no cords hanging out of the bottom of the vehicle. Keeps it clean and it's easy to get to. That makes sense to me. Yeah. So this door slides open like this. Um, you can load the shells in that way. I've also seen where they load a lot of the howitzer shells in cases on the ramp itself and then retract the ramp up. Depends on the mission. Depends on how many rounds they would be needing to use. Uh, I included wing jacks in the model not to support the aircraft because it needs it, but when you are taking the top of the aircraft off so you can get inside of it, see all the internal details, as well as building it initially too, putting a wing jack under each side um, right off the edge. Of the first, the engine. first engine yep. will support the wings because if you put this wing on, the model might want to tip that sure, way while you're, you're building this one. Very clever. So it also serves its purpose for when you take the top of the fuselage off and you don't want to break your propeller blades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Sending it on the ground. Yeah, putting all that strain on whatever that connection is mm -hmm. for leaning forward. I see what you're talking about. I have so, to find an edge of a table to put it on otherwise. Right, yes. So I'll, I'll scoot this over a little bit so I can get to what I need to get to. So there's a couple hidden axles. It's really just two axles and a few studs at the front that hold this entire top section on. And I, I built it in so it's hidden really well. In the instructions you'll see obviously where I'm doing what needs to be done. You shouldn't need a razor blade to do this, but I'm gonna use one just because it's easier to get at. Uh, just to get this up, it's only a four stud connection. It should be weak enough where you could probably push down on it, mm -hmm. just getting this curved slope off, but it just helps get that slope up and yeah. off. Those flush connections, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, Not all of us have fingernails without tiles. To fit in there. Tiles have a groove, but curved slopes don't. Mm -hmm. um, there's a brick separator included in your model. Wow. So, <laughs> uh, just to get these off, so I left these studs open 
on purpose just so you can get at it, peel it off. And then there's a bar also included in the kit that just slides these <laughs> axles out. So all the tools to do everything that Cody is doing right now is included in your kit. Mm -hmm. Because like he said, we cut no corners. I don't know if you really have to take this portion off, but it's an easy way to access the cockpit. Mm -hmm. So you can get figures in and out of there easily. It's just a, a few stud connection that pops that off, but it is helpful to have that come off before you take top of the aircraft off. And it just looks right off. Oh boy, look at that. So this is where the wing jacks will come into play. And so it just sits nice and smooth like that. Up and off. So you don't break your propeller blades. This is almost a cool way to display it too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing uncool about this model. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, all Technic here. I'm supporting itself, supporting the tail because the tail's so heavy. It's just Technic beams and bricks impressive. running all the way along. Uh, so yeah, there's some internal details. Uh, but there's the battle management station with chairs for the operators of the guns. And they have all their screens and everything to control the weapons. And you can see the backs of the weapons. The Bulfers has its uh, four round clip feeding out of the top. And the howitzer, so they all articulate. That is awesome. And you can load around into the end of the 105 millimeter howitzer. Just can't really see the doors in the way. Well, and if you're willing to use your imagination, that portion of the model is much more playable because you can actually hold it and move it around a little bit without the, the wings on top. Right, yeah, so that's, <laughs> that was the intent. Is I, I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, see, I don't know if camera guy can see this really, but there's the uh, storage racks here for the 105 millimeter howitzer rounds and the clips for the bofers. And then there's just a chain on the back of this to illustrate the feed chute. Mm -hmm. And there will be some cockpit details as well. Um, a lot of printing, a lot of printed elements up here. Um, that's one thing that was lacking in the original model was all the interior details, especially in the cockpit. I go along with that. And the landing gear is pretty easy to retract once you have that off. But here are the um, axles that go into place. Oh, cool, look at that. That just locked the gear in place. Mm -hmm. And it takes a minute to get it to retract. Um, just because you spin this yellow axle to turn the actuators. Oh, okay, so that's why you were saying it's easier to put them up when the wings are off, or pretty much only possible to put them up. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> but it's also the only thing that was strong enough is Plus it's kind of fun. Technic actuators. But even that, I didn't trust that they were strong enough, so that's why I put that lock in the bottom. Right. You know, especially I suppose if it's going to sit over time, like somebody's got it on right. display for, for yeah. a good chunk of time. Yeah, so look at that. Just retract straight up into the fuselage and two sets of doors close. Look how neat that looks. Pretty flush, small gap. And then this reddish brown axle is what locks the gear into place. And I'm missing the, again, this is the prototype, so I'm missing the door that closes over here, but this one does close here. Nice, you can see how they meet so, though. Yeah. It'll, it'll meet right there. Both of those are very clean considering everything that <laughs> goes into this model. And the, and the sensors on the bottom as well. Mm -hmm. So, that being said, I might as well retract this one too, then I can put it on the stand. on the stand, landing gears are track, it's easier to do it when it's on the stand rather than holding up like I did. You can do it either way. Oh, I see what you're saying. But the intent is to have it on the stand. And there's this little kickstand sort of thing that's really only necessary 
for when it's the fuselage resting on the stand because this helps support the nose without the tail mm -hmm. on top. Otherwise, you can take this off, just separate it like I just did when it's on display in full. We can keep it on, doesn't matter. I just say why, why have more legs when you don't need them. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. But it just goes in these square holes, these two by two cutout holes that I have available here. This isn't attached completely. It's a lot easier to get on the stand without the top, the entire plane too, because it's really heavy. And guiding it into those holes is not easy when it's that heavy. Nice. So, it supports itself. Um, that's what this front portion of the stand does, which again is unnecessary when the entire plane is together. This door also folds down to get into the cockpit. Some stairs for the minifigures to walk up. Hung up on itself. So, I can put it all together now. <laughs> <laughs> You can spend hours building this model after you've built this model. <laughs> I'd like some suspenseful music playing here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there we go. And then slide your axles into place. Easy peasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that comes together real nice. That was not the case on the original sure. display model. It was welded together. You could not get it apart. Mm -hmm. Pretty much had to smash it to get it apart. <laughs> Strategically take it apart. Well, the evolution between the two is pretty incredible to see. If you've ever seen it, Cody's talking about the C-130 that's been around with Brick Mania to uh, various shows, and I think we had it at the GHQ for a while, um, but it was the starting point for this AC-130 model, and the upgrades are significant. <laughs> <laughs> Quite. Man, it looks cool on the stand, too. That, that tilt is just, is everything. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was intentional to build that. Mm -hmm. A um, bit of a tilt to it just because that's how they fire when they're direct fire weapon. And they get the ground, they would just do a slow, lazy circle off to one side. And of course, at this point, you can take your wing jacks off. Chocks away! <laughs> um, you can hook up your battery box. Battery's not included, which is why I'm going to have to turn on the motors for you later on in the video. <laughs> <laughs> and then just these uh, little hydraulic-ish rams. Those bars go back into place. And up it goes. Drop that portion down. And up it goes. Voila. Wow. And then, you can remove the front of the stand. Making anyone nervous? <laughs> Woo. So it's much cleaner without that, that's why I suggest mm -hmm. take that off. Wow. What many would have considered the impossible, <laughs> he turned it into a kit.
Not only can he build it, but now you can too with your two chapter books worth of instructions. <laughs> <laughs> a novel yes. by Cody O'Sell. <laughs> yeah, the first book is dedicated entirely to the lower half of the fuselage. Mm -hmm. and the rest of it's just wings and whatnot. Wow. Who cares about that? Just a bunch of curved slopes and wings. <laughs> Well, I cannot wait to see pictures of this thing pop it up on social media. I'm sure people won't be able to resist sharing it once they uh, are <laughs> able to find time to complete this incredible build. How long would you think going through the instructions that this, something like this would take for someone even who's an experienced builder? Well, it took, uh, I think it took five days just for our test builder to get it done. That's impressive. Um, of course, they're into that there's verifying that the pieces are the right mm -hmm. pieces, things like that. So uh, maybe an experienced builder, maybe three or four days. Eight hour days. Challenge accepted <laughs> so, to all you out there who got in on the first batch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I tried to make it as doable as I could, so hopefully you don't find it too difficult. It is a five star kit. You are best to have some experience before mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, attempting to build this. A lot of pins, a lot of technic, but it holds true. A challenge to design <laughs> and now you can pass on the challenge to build. Yes. <laughs> Feels good to have it done and in the books. <laughs> I bet. Anything else you want to cover for the uh, features on the kit? I think that about does it for me. I don't think I'm missing anything. All right, cool. Well, this thing does come with a full crew of 13. So I guess now let's kick it over to Lando and we'll take a closer look at the AC-130 crew. Jumping right in, thanks for the transition, Dylan. Um, we have the massive AC-130 crew 13 guys total. This is like unprecedented, so um, really cool. Um, where do you want to start, Dylan? So do we have kind of like distinct groupings here of different styles? Yeah, a little uniforms? bit. Um, okay. there's, I try to get some variety, but then there are also some um, similar uniforms that I saw um, uh, with the, within the crew. So um, for the figures, let's, let's start, over, uh, start okay. over here. So this would be kind of like a, a windbreaker jacket. Um, or, or like, a, like a fleece um, sweater type of thing mm -hmm. that they would wear underneath their armor sometimes. Um, just keeping them warm, um, gets a little chilly up there. And underneath of that, it would be the OCP camouflage uniform um, that you would see these guys wearing. Um, and so it gave them all kind of unique faces, which is cool. Uh, a lot of variety in this, in this kit. Um, moving on over here, these are probably the two of the more unique uh, minifigures. Okay. Um, so I couldn't find the exact name of this, but there is a, um, it's like a plate carrier or flak vest kind of thing mm -hmm. um, that seemed to be unique to the AC-130 um, oh. crews. So that was, that was interesting finding that. I could, again, I couldn't find the exact name of that, but um, I tried to, tried to uh, capture that in this um, kind of plate carrier as best I could. So, which it kind of makes sense um, for, for they're, flying a little, they're flying lower to the ground, they're potentially taking fire. Uh, it would make sense that the, the crew would have uh, some more uh, personal armor, body yeah, armor. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, that's represented here, and then a pistol holster on the side. Um, and then moving on to this, this is actually a, um, it's called like snap track uh, flight vest type of thing. It's, it's, the Air Force has a different, uh, has a, a whole different range of equipment. Um, so this is like a survival vest that um, those, each pouches would contain different items that in, in the event that they'd have to... It uh, went down? Yeah, it went down. Um, there's different items for survival. Um, and it's just like a really modular um, kind of survival vest there. Cool. Well. Yeah. Uh, again, both, the, both of these minifigures have that uh, OCP, Operational Camouflage Pattern Uniform. Moving on, these are, this is just one of the more basic, um, it's just the uh, jacket and trousers uh, for these guys in that OCP camouflage. So this would be a great way, um, and you're getting, a, you're getting a ton of crew members with this. So mm -hmm. it's awesome that you can have a nice detailed um, model and then all the minifigures to go with it. So yeah, really right. Cool. Um, again, different faces on all these guys. Uh, so it's, it's a nice, uh, huge variety going on here. Uh, and finally, over here, this would probably be one of the more common configurations that I saw um, these guys wearing. Again, it's that, um, that the, sort of the, the vest, the uh, plate carrier, mm -hmm. um, and then they would have their own uh, unique pistol holster is what I saw. I believe that was a pistol holster. Again, they have a couple pouches, so it was, it was kind of tough to tell off these pictures. But um, they appeared to have a special pistol holster that, again, I hadn't really seen anywhere else other than on AC-130 crews. So um, I'd be really interested to, into, uh, to hear more about this and learn more about that. But um, I tried to capture um, what I could off of photographs as best I could in minifig form. So this is a lot of fun making these, this crew. Um, 
Yeah. Anything else you want to see or hear about? No, it's it's cool. You know, it's one of the most impressive, if not the most impressive, yeah. kits that uh, the Brickmania has undertaken in recent memory. Absolutely. And uh, to have a crew like this to go along with it, I think, is is really cool to see how how far all that stuff has come. It really is the culmination of the evolution of Brickmania. So mm -hmm. it's cool to see that yeah. displayed in minifigure form with 13 of your closest friends, right? 13 of my closest friends, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. <laughs> All right, so that does it. That is Cody Ocell's final designer's desk here for Brickmania and the completion of the long-awaited AC-130 video. Uh, Cody, thanks so much for everything, and uh, obviously you know, this is uh, quite the masterpiece of a build here. Um, make sure to leave your comments and uh, thank Cody for this incredible build and uh, let us know if you were able to pick one up and complete it. Uh, otherwise, stay tuned for batch two and thanks for watching.